Hello, this is Scott. Welcome back to my YouTube channel where I talk about a variety of different data science topics um, as well as cover uh, commercial and non-commercial platforms. Today we're talking about a non-commercial platform called R, open source. Um, and we're continuing on with a series on forecasting and time series. Last time we talked about autoregressive models. Today we're going to talk about moving averages. This will be a very brief video, um, but I figured with having covered AR, we need to cover MA, and we'll be talking more about um, these types of models in the next few sessions, uh, getting into ARIMA a little bit deeper than we've been. If you haven't seen the, video, the current videos, uh, it's probably worth your time to, to go back Again, it's a whole series, um, and the series is RXX. So if we look at the, um, the formula for a moving average model, the mathematical representation, this is what it looks like. So it's an MAQ of order Q. Uh, and essentially, the, the time series is equal to a constant plus these um, white noise error, essentially these E sub keys, and then a coefficient um, theta. Uh, and so this representation goes back Q periods, and MA1 would just go back, have one theta one, um, uh, two would have theta two, et cetera, uh, going back. We also talked about model restrictions last time. And so these are the normal restrictions for MA models. Again, this comes from, from Hyman and Dr. A. And so let's go right into R. This will be, again, very brief. Last time we talked about the different, different ways to generate AR processes, but the last model we, we actually use is this R function, arima.sim. Notice I don't have any packages. This is native into R, so you don't have to load anything. Um, you can do this straight from R. So I'm using R Studio. I'm going to execute um, this this model here. Uh, actually, I executed the series plot. So I'm generating a MA1 with theta equal to 0 0.5, 200 observations, and this is the plot of that series. So I should have correlation with um, one period back. So if I look at the other correlation function, sure enough, I have a positive correlation with the last period. And it is significant. The blue bounds are significance levels. Um, you know, with looking at a lot of points, sometimes you'll get things that, that are outside that are insignificant based um, on multiple inferences. Uh, but we can definitely see for this data equal 0.5 MA1 model, um, we do have uh, significance. So let me execute these. Uh, I'm going to execute a Y1, which is data equals negative 0.5 this time. This is a series itself. And if I look at the co correlation, um, autocorrelation function, sure enough, period one back is highly negative correlation, which is exactly what we expect to see. Um, and then now let's do a couple of MA2s. So again, so I'm using this ARIMA sim, I've got theta 1.5, theta 2.3. So let me execute that. There's the series itself. And then I can see that, sure enough, period one back, highly correlated, theta one, theta two, or two periods back is what I would assume to see, both positive with values of theta, both positive. And then lastly, if I have theta negative uh, of 0.5, and this time theta positive 0.3, I should see, sure enough, a negative correlation one period back and a positive correlation. So hopefully that was useful. Want to keep it keep it short and hopefully you'll join me next time we get further into R and time series.